Good morning. Oh, once again, I forgot my water. I'm gonna grab it. Hi, I'm back. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, hi, Jarrell. Good morning, Brianna. Standing strong. We got Waylon here. You guys know that Waylon has his own YouTube interview show as well. If you guys don't know Waylon, go check him out. Uh, hi, uh, Shrinky Tan. You have to let me know how to say that. Hey, Lily. Hey, Chat Noir. Hey, Rajasi. Oh, boy. Arun. Hey, Ral Luca. Elaine is here. Welcome. Enderman is so cute. Welcome. Hey, Steph. Sergio. Scotty Moon. Hi, David. Jenny Plays is here. Cartoony. We got Amber here. Wow, she said hi today. <laughs> Applehead Slate is here. Cat Girl. Ethan. Mam Mitch. Okay, we got a whole lot of goodness on here. Lego She, the Thomas fan, is here. All right. Hi, guys. Alyssa's here. Orly's here. Kathleen is here. Shoelle is here. Okay. Big crew today. Oh, thank you. Let's see. Steph says, love your shirt. Let me back up. This is my shirt. Look at me, I'm doing a little fashion show for you. Stepping on my chair. <laughs> I have it over a dress. <laughs> That's a terrible fashion show. This is why I'm not a model. <laughs> I don't know how to pose. I had the crazy idea once when I was young. I don't know, you know, I think God puts in your heart what you're gonna do when you grow up, but you don't really know what it is. You kind of have, I guess I knew I was gonna be talking to people or be in front of people. So I had no concept of what that might be. So I actually, in my teenage years, tried to be a model. Can you believe that? Like, um, I, do, I got hired by the mall in the big town next door. And I would do like fashion shows for the mall for their new like fall and spring lines that would come out and um, <laughs> And you know, there's a lot of modeling schools that will take your money even if you have no um, business. You could never make it. They'll still take your money because I went, to, I went to a modeling school in Minneapolis. And, and I paid so much money to go be part of some um, ridiculous, well, maybe it's not ridiculous. It was ridiculous for me to go be part of some, I don't know, it was a competition. And I drove to Chicago it's like an eight hour drive to do some runway stuff. Listen, y'all, 5'8 is short for runway if you're a female. I'm not even 5'5. Five five. I had no business taking my chunky 5'5 five five self or less down to Chicago to try to be <laughs> in a competition. <laughs> and it was judged by. Um, this famous black model, I think her name was Imam. Do you guys remember her? I think she was famous in the 90s. I think she was married to David Bowie, is that her? I could be totally lying. No, no, I think I'm lying. It was the other famous black model. It was Beverly Johnson. I think she's the one that judged the competition. I had no business being there. Oh, somebody's saying my hair looks, I just got out of the, it's wet. I haven't done anything with it. It's still wet from my shower. So it looks a little stringy, it's just wet. Um, why did I say all that? Because somebody complimented me on my shirt. You see this rabbit trail we went down? Angela's here, good. So um, sometimes we think we know, <laughs> sometimes God gives us this like little glimmer of an idea of what we're supposed to do, but we don't know what it all means. And stringing it together, <laughs> you're welcome for the rabbit trail, <laughs> Steph says. 
We're trying to string it all together. We're trying to figure out what could this mean? <clears throat> yeah, but it'll send you in these different directions. And um, I remember when I was working in a factory, just sitting there on an assembly line all day long, putting parts, putting parts, putting parts. And I just was like, God, I feel like I'm meant for something bigger than this. You ever felt that way? Like, I don't know what it is. I know it has to do with performing. What is it? Because I, you know, I would go to karaoke with my friends and I realized really fast it wasn't singing. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to hear me sing. Um, yeah, I say all that because you guys saw the title of my message today. And you see, it wasn't too much of a rabbit trail because it leads me back to, um, do you want world fame or you want God to know your name? Hey, Lily, we got two Lilies on today. Thank you, Rosalina fan. I think this is like um, made, this is like an, made by uh, Native Americans. It's like an Indian. I think I got it at a special place where they, they do handmade jewelry. So there's a lot of ways you can be world famous. There's a lot of ways people can know who you are. You can do exploits that has the whole world in awe with their jaw dropped. But then there's things you can do where God's like, I see you, Jenny. I see you, Lynn. I see you, Emmy. I see you, Brittany. So I just found this little paragraph. Oh, it's 1 a.m. there. Okay, she got two massive assignments due this week. Well, you, you hop off anytime because you can always watch this later. So I found this little saying that made me think of What's more important, world fame or that God knows your name? Hey, Rosalina fan. Okay, so this is a little paragraph from Poems with Power to Strengthen the Soul. It doesn't even have an author. That fits right in. It doesn't, it's not even attributed. This is written by Anonymous. This person made an impact enough to end up in this book, yet we'll never know who they are, but guess what? God knows who they are. Hi, Ruby. Hi, Octonauts fan. So it says, though my name be spread abroad like winged seed. So the seed has got wings. From sh It goes from shore to shore. That's like, this is, this is written before the internet. This is like 100 years ago. Though my name be spread abroad like winged seed from shore to shore. What thou art before God, thou art, and nothing more. Let's say that last line again. What thou art before thy God, that thou art, and nothing more. Yes, Aswad, isn't that great? Uh, Aswad, I probably said your name wrong. I'm sorry. But look at that. Though my name be spread abroad like winged seed from shore to shore, what thou art before thy God, thou art, and nothing more. Who are we trying to impress in this life? Who are we trying to make ourselves be a big difference to? Who, how are we, are we trying to get our, our name out there? See me, know me, support me. Hey, Catherine, supposedly us people in Connecticut are in some severe hurricanes, nasty storms. Oh, you know what? Um, Orly let me know that's uh, possibly affecting the New York area too. So I was praying about that last night. Ruby, yes, air hug. Air hug for Ruby. So what are we going after? Who, who are we trying to be important to? Who are we trying to be like, notice me, see me, follow me. You know, there's a lot of people trying to be fame for fames, just trying to be famous for fame. They're not 
necessarily doing anything to make a difference, to leave a legacy. Um, they're just, they're, they're just like attention mongers. Hey, Blake Varga, shout out to you. Somebody else is listening while they're playing their poppet. Hey, multitasking, I do the same thing. Uh, Jarrell says yes, like Kim Kardashian. Um, <laughs> well, if you think of how she got famous, yeah. So relatable for fame, just to seek approval from others. You probably got that in the conversation though. Uh, this Timmy go to school, he has gone grades one through seven, but you guys don't know something has happened since I spoke to you last week. I pulled him out of school. Yep, um, the LA school system was not doing him any favors. It was, it was a battle the last couple of years and they, I just felt like they weren't listening. They weren't helping him. He was falling behind. He was failing so many classes. And so I decided, you know what? I can do a better job teaching him myself. So as of this last week, Timothy is now in a private school. Administrator is me. So I'm going to be able to teach him from a place of caring. He's not just a number. Knowing where he's at. Thank you, D. Is it D France or Diff France? I appreciate your donation. Um, so, yeah, it's it takes time and it cuts into other things I wanted to do. But if I want a child to grow up and be a decent human being who can make decisions out of logic and have conversations without having hissy fits and tantrums and to be a, a pleasant person who maybe even is a contribution to society. It's not going to happen if he's being a robot. Thank you, Elena. I appreciate your generosity. It's not going to happen by a system that's breeding people to be worker ants. It's not going to happen in a system where they're indoctrinated robots. So I was a little nervous at first, not maybe feeling like I was qualified, but you know what? Love and care goes a long way. So does actually having the, you know, wanting what's best for them and not just, you know, teaching from your heart and not because the higher ups all voted and the union said, this is the curriculum. Even if, let's just push him through, even if he doesn't understand it. Guys, they're trying to teach him eighth grade math. I mean, in sixth grade, they, thank you, Karen. I really appreciate you guys. The, teaching him concepts where he, he doesn't even know two digit subtraction. And they're just pushing him through. And I saw the effect that this had on a, a friend of mine. He graduated high school not even being able to read. This is a friend of mine I met on the movie sets. And I didn't know why at first, but he wanted me to, uh, we would always work on movie sets and he always had me fill out his paperwork for him. And I didn't know why at first. I was just like, okay, I guess I'll fill out your paperwork for you. He, he was from New York, so maybe he was the New York school system he graduated out of. I think he had already graduated when he moved here. I don't know. Either way, I recognized he would ask me to read stuff off from, from, from the menu. And when we would go out to eat sometimes, we would go to fast food and he would just point to the, let's get the burger one. And I'd be like, which burger? There's like nine burgers. And he would describe the picture. And I realized the school had just pushed him through and he didn't, he didn't, he didn't know how to read. So I, I don't want that same fate for Timothy. And now I realize I probably should have done it sooner. But, and yes, Brittany, he does have an IEP. And um, they honestly haven't even been doing the IEP the last year and a half due to COVID. So that was basically speech therapy 
um, and his speech has gone down. Like, you can't really understand him when he talks. I mean, I know what he's saying, but the average person can't really understand him. So, um, oh, good job on your test, Lily. Third grade and second, oh, second grade and third grade. Okay, good job on that. Um, but long story short, I'm now a teacher. And though I was nervous at first, do you guys know that statistically, studies show a, a child who is homeschooled, even by a high school dropout, scores better and has a better chance at college. I don't, I don't remember all the statistics. I, I don't, can't even cite the test, the, the thing I read, but a high school dropout homeschooling someone, that child scores better on like entrance tests and stuff to get into college than if they're taught through a fully accredited certified teacher with a fancy degree. They actually score better. So I'm just taking a deep breath and I'm taking it from day to day. They will not be following through on the IEP unless I go to their approved um, study programs. But because of COVID, they're all, um, they're all full. Because a lot of kids who are special needs have compromised immune systems. So they are um, not wanting to go back to school, but they need to stay safe. They have lung conditions or they can't wear masks or, you know, they're the kind of special needs where they won't wear them whatever. So uh, the waiting list is so long, I can't even get him in one of the schools. Not that I would want to because it's the same curriculum. So we'll see how it goes. I, I've, I'm taking care of the IEP myself as far as getting him services. I'm, um, uh, he had his first physical therapy this week to try to help. He, I don't know if, you, well, you guys haven't really seen him walk. Um, he does have cerebral palsy, so he kind of walks with his, he can't put his left heel on the ground, even though we had this extensive surgery. All right, you know what? Enough about Timothy. You guys have questions for me, and I need to stop talking about Timothy. I know you guys care, and that's so sweet of you to ask, but I'm getting his OT taken care of. I'm going to go through my private insurance through Rob's work to get him into speech therapy elsewhere. So the IEP things will be taken care of. Um, thank you, Derek. Thank you, I appreciate it. Timothy will be way better off with you as his teacher. Thank you, Frank. Okay, is Catherine's family is always first. Hello, Mr. S. Questions for me, you guys. Um, and do you have anything else I want to say on the topic of is it better if the world knows your name or better if you have world fame or if God knows your name? Okay. Hey, CJ. Jarrell asks, who was the kid in Dar Man that played the character that your character abused, accused of being on drugs? That was Devin. Devin is an awesome actor. Bias asks, what do you think about OCD? In what way? I don't... Uh, I think it's tough for the people who have it. I don't think it's easy when you feel compelled to do something and you can't get it out of your head unless you do it. Timothy has a lot of OCD traits where, um, you know, that's another thing about conventional school. Here we go, going back to it because you asked, okay, you're asking about the behavior of those with OCD. So Timothy gets something in his mind and unless he takes care of it, unless he does that thing, his mind is not settled. He can't, he can't go back and do what he was supposed to do. So a lot of his fits and tantrums in school were because they wouldn't, he had like, he, he has to do something and they would be, no, you can't do it. Sit here, sit down, focus. You can't do it. You can't, you can't, you can't even sit here and focus, but he couldn't, he couldn't. Unless he took care of that one thing, his mind was not at ease. He was not at peace. So, and here's the thing about parenting a child with like autism or OCD or whatever. They have to do that thing they have to do. And if they don't, it, you could be teaching them the most brilliant, wonderful thing in the world. They can't, it can't go in. It can't go in until they get to do that thing that's on their mind. So people who don't understand that, 
they what Timothy getting calls from school. He's having fits. He's having tantrums. He's throwing himself on the ground. Well, it's because he had to do this thing and they wouldn't let him do this thing. And he couldn't get his mind off that thing until he did it. So, so at home, you know, if he's like, I got, I got it. I have to go change. I have to go change this thing. I got to go. I got to go on the computer. I, I got to log into my Roblox video game and I have to change my profile picture. It sounds like, it sounds, you know, to someone who does, who our brains don't work that way. We're like, no, we're in school now. You could do that after school. But guess what? You could force him to sit there in that chair and f tell him to listen. You, his mind is not there. He won't be able to repeat back to you anything he's learning until he goes and he changes his profile picture. Then his, then he can breathe. Then he's at ease. Now we can continue on with the school. And, and people who don't understand special needs, like I have so many friends that criticize me saying, you're just giving in. You're a bad parent. You should force him to do this, force him to do that. Make him sit there. He's just not disciplined. You're just letting him run amok. But I've tried... I've tried all the normal ways you're supposed to do it and it doesn't work. So we take a five minute break. We do what he needs to do. Then he can come back, be at peace. And now he's actually learning. He's not freaking out, crying, screaming about having to change his profile picture or whatever it is. That's just an example. Good morning, Wolf O'Donnell. So where are we? Ah, uh, Lily's gotten straight A's. Enderman is so cute. Hello, David. Catherine is... Okay, you're asking if I play Minecraft. I've never played Minecraft. Um, okay, Miss Minerva. Okay, questions for me. What What do you guys want to talk about today? Yes, yeah, Seattle Green. Public schools are indoctrination camps, not educational. It's very true. It's It's gotten gotten that way. If your child does something wrong, be there to help make it right. Good idea, Blake. Yeah, and help them learn from it. VS says, having a child with autism causes stress on the parents because they are unprepared for the extra challenges they have to face. Most definitely, most definitely. And, you know, some of us don't want to go down that rabbit hole of having to research everything on the topic of autism. And sometimes it doesn't even help because every child is different. Brittany said, for me, it's not about world fame, but about making a difference. One day is important, for they say your struggle is part of your story. Yeah, that's so true. We could do a whole, we could do a whole thing on that. And it is part of your story. You know, people, I think when you see somebody who's like rich and famous or has overcome so much, it's it's like, how did they get there? And a lot of it, I just realized I've had lipstick on my teeth this whole this whole time. Oh well. Um, what have you had to struggle to overcome? That is part of your story without that refining to make you stronger. You guys know refining, like when they would take metal, like a blacksmith would take metal and they would burn it in the fire and they would try to get all the impurities out of it because the impurities made it weaker. And then they would put it in cold water and they would be pounding on it and pounding on it. All the stuff they do is to make, well, good morning, sweetie pie. Hi, cutie cuterton. Hi, mighty man of God. Hi, you world changer. Good morning. Say good morning. 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 Good morning, my little world changer. Okay. So we're look, we're answering some questions. Um, Karen, you're not behind. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Oh, it, that's so sweet. I have a couple of you guys that would totally be Timothy's teacher if you lived closer. Do what they teach in school does really help in life. Okay, you, you're looking through some other questions, sweetie pie? Okay, Angela, can you explain what happened to me? I'm late. Okay. So you guys, any guys who are late and don't know what topic we're on, you guys can rewatch this later. 
Uh, yeah, they don't even teach you like basic life skills. You know what they should be teaching in school? Like how to manage your money, how to like pay for stuff, how to like know the, you know, the best prices and how to uh, grow your own food, how to, uh, uh, how to be self-sufficient. But guess what? They don't want you to be self-sufficient. Uh, Orly's saying the New York system is not great either. <clears throat> the New York school system. Uh, Reboot Thomas Tank Engine whistles. Hello, Elijah. Choo choo. Choo choo. <laughs> uh, Brittany says hi. Okay, do you have advice for a nine year old? I'm nervous because of my. Oh, year nine. Sorry, not nine year old. Year nine. You know, be yourself, be true to who you are. <laughs> Choo choo. Choo choo. Be, tr be true to who you are. Don't worry about what other people think of you. Do your best in school. Don't try to fit into tr to trends. Don't, if, if you, if there's people that say, oh, unless you do this, we won't be your friend, run. Cause you don't want to be their friend because it starts with something small and then it grows and grows and grows into bigger things. So don't get pressured stand strong. If people are making fun of you for anything outward, just realize they must not like themselves. That's why they're picking on you. So love yourself. Do, do your best. Ask for help if you need it. All right. <clears throat> All right. Blake says he has a question. Oh, people are wishing there was not COVID there. How do you change a tire? That would be a good one. They might teach that in, sh they might teach that in automotive class though. But nice, not all schools have automotive class. Okay. Nor the, nor the schools in India are not good, Sudril says. Okay, I forget today is Sunday. I'm always late. It's okay, Andrea. What is your drive to help people? I think I just don't want... Um, I don't want people to to go through the torment I went through when I was young. I want people to know that they matter. I want people to know that no matter what flaws they have, they can make a difference. I don't want people to think that they're not good enough because I think that gets pounded in us so much by our peers growing up, by people who want to criticize, by <clears throat> just, we just hear it all around. And sometimes we're saying those things to ourselves because we're looking at, other people who are successful or other people who've done more and we think, wow, how come I can't do that? Or how come I've never done that or been that? And so <clears throat> I guess my drive is I don't, I don't want anyone to feel as crummy as I used to feel. And I wish I had had somebody like me helping me along, holding my hand, saying it's going to be okay. This doesn't matter. Don't stress out about this. Don't worry about that. Um, yeah, I, I just, I guess I'm just concerned about maybe I'm an empath because uh, when other people hurt, it hurts me. I can't, I can't watch the news. I can't, I can't hear anybody talk about a child being hurt or a child being abused. I just can't. So I guess my part is to help you guys realize how special you are, how great you are, to know that you have everything in you to be enough, that you are enough, that you don't need any outward thing that you have it all within you to rise up and become who you were meant to be, to rise up, to help the people you were meant to help. <clears throat> because we, none of us can do it alone, right? But we can link arms. Maybe I can help some of you get your courage back. And maybe some of you are meant to go feed the homeless but you haven't had the courage. Maybe some of you are meant to rescue children out of slavery. Maybe some of you are meant to do these things. And if I can encourage you on your path and I can help you see that you make a difference with your voice, with your actions, with your vote, with what you stand for, then I am taking part in all the things you're doing to help humanity. And that, that again, back to the topic, I may not gain world fame by encouraging you, but whatever you gain in fame or whatever you gain in helping people, God sees that. 
and I'm part of that. You know what I mean? So if something you speak to someone stops them from killing themselves and they become someone who invents the cure for cancer, guess what? You're just as much a part of that. You have just as much part in that cure for cancer. Maybe not on earth. Maybe no one will, and, and, and it's not something we would go bragging about. We wouldn't say, I talked them down off a ledge. Listen, guys, hey, look at me. They were going to jump. I talked them out of it. And look, now they cured cancer. You guys can actually, you might as well just be thanking me. Because <laughs> it wasn't for me, there would be no cure for cancer. That's not what I mean. It means God knows what you did. He saw, and you will be rewarded on earth and in heaven. But there's no little thing. There's no little thing that we do because everything carries on and echoes through. Angela said, Catherine, you saved me from giving up on me. I don't want to cry to you or cry to else, but I will cry. It's okay to cry. You know, sometimes it's, it's a release. It's like taking the pressure off. You got pipes that are going to burst. You have to kind of let the water run a little bit. Any of you guys who live in cold states, I grew up in Minnesota, when it's below freezing, when it gets super cold, you leave the faucet on a little bit. You, you let the water run through a little bit because if it gets cold and the pipes freeze, they could burst. And you guys, if you keep shoving down your emotions, you keep stuffing them down and not letting them out because you want to appear strong. You don't want anyone to see you cry. Guess what? You could burst. It's okay to cry sometimes. Sometimes when... You, Honestly, if you don't cry at the state of the world and all the atrocities going on, maybe you're numb. Or maybe you don't care anymore. But I know that's not you guys because you're on this live and you know this is not just foo-foo stuff when we talk. When we talk, we're getting down to the heart of the matter, hopefully. Okay, Wolf says, you're the best around. Nothing's going to ever keep you down. <laughs> Brittany says, who needs a therapist when we have Catherine Norland? Uh, Steph, yes, I'm the same, Angela. I feel worthless, but you were applying to my messages. Help save me a number of times. Look at that. Look at this community. Look at you guys. Angela stepped up. She's replying to people I can't always get to. She doesn't have to do that. She has her own life. What do you want? You want what? Oh, okay. Briefly, hold on. Eli wants me to get something for him. All right, he wanted to play his learning games on his iPad. So you guys are an extension of me. But you reply to my messages too, Catherine. <laughs> You've given me so much. I can't always get to them. Um, I got a lot pulling on me. Um, Lily asks, I've ever gotten straight A's as a child. No, heck no. I barely made it through high school. I didn't care. I didn't like myself. I didn't want to be there. High school was a torture chamber in the worst years of my life. I skipped school a lot. Yeah. Uh, do you guys remember the live I did with my mom? I feel like I still have lipstick on my teeth. Do you remember the live I did with my mom? And we revealed that I had all these like skip school notices and I shoved them underneath this like bench we had in our entryway. And years later, <laughs> after high school, she found all these notes from the teacher of me being truant or from the principal or whatever, not showing up. No, I hated high school. Okay, Loretta says, good morning, Catherine. I remember the different groups while in high school. Several years later, we were friends on Facebook. We missed out on being friends all those years in school. Yeah, they're just judged by ridiculous things. Happy Wise, how are you, Catherine? I hope you remember me. I don't know if that's your name, but you got a happy face and wise there. Okay, so let's see, where where else are we? No, I did not do well in school. And um, you know, I wasn't interested. You guys gotta make, they have to make 
learning interesting for people. And not all people can just sit in a chair and be a robot and be fed information to. The war of blah, 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 during the year, blah, 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 there was all these people killed. How does that relate to, you know, get them up. Get them up. Get the people against the other people and say, you guys are this side, this is this, this American side, and what are we fighting for? And make them repeat, freedom, get them up, get them to play. That's going to stick in their head. You guys are wearing, you guys are the red coats and you guys are the blue coats and you're battling for freedom. You're battling against slavery. You don't want it to end. You want to end. And then you're shout. I mean, that's what kids are going to remember. Not sitting in a chair and learning facts. Look, I'm on. A, I'm, I'm freaking out right now. I'm getting all into it. <laughs> you should not want me to drink coffee. All right. Thank you, Catherine, for changing my life and helping me not give up. Orly, it's my pleasure. Jarrell, did you ever used to compare yourself to someone else? Yes. Yes, I wanted to be that supermodel from the 90s, Cindy Crawford. I wanted to be her. And so I bought her workout videos and I tried to eat like her and I tried to exercise like her and I tried to, but guess what? I'm not meant to be her. I was never going to be her. No matter how hard I tried, I wasn't going to grow five inches. It wasn't going to happen. I wasn't going to have her waistline. I wasn't going to have her beautiful hair, her beautiful mole, whatever. Um, thank you, Waylon. Uh, let's see. Wow, you're wearing rainbow today. <laughs> <laughs> um, sort of. There's no red, though. I don't know. Red, orange, yellow, blue, green, purple. I I'm wearing, like, four of the colors. Okay, so Gigi Grant, he said, I believed in God since I was born. We all did. We all did when we were born. We just, you know, forget it as we grow. Or we have people in our life that hurt us, and then we start to question is God real? Is he really there? Why am I being hurt? You know, children who just came from the heavenly realm, you see, I, I, I've, I've seen this with so many times with so many babies. They, they're just, they have that connection to God. And I remember when Timothy was little, I could hear him like having this conversation in his room and, and I would see him totally mesmerized at there was nothing there but he was mesmerized and multiple times I saw this happening and then when he was like three he was like like God knew what he was saying he was just talking gibberish and and then I, I was like who's he talking to and then and this is before he was really talking and I went in in the room to go see what he was talking and he said he said, and I heard him say, I gotta go. And then, and then he came back to me. And there was multiple times where I knew he was talking to God or some heavenly being. I can't even explain it. Maybe that doesn't even sound legit to you guys, but there was multiple times where I knew. And my mom had the same thing with um, my niece. She was, she was telling, telling my mom the entire conversation she had with God when she was three. And um, children are pure and innocent and light and vessels. And then we have bad stuff happen to us and we become jaded and we become hurt. And we think, oh, yeah, Miss, Miss uh, Minerva could be guardian angel. Sure. We are without a question intelligently designed, Frank said. Um, Enderman says, do you always talk to yourself because I am always talking to myself? You know what? Sometimes you need to. Sometimes you have to, like, if I'm, like, whining or crying or being, like, lazy and not doing what I'm supposed to do, I have to be like, snap out of it, Catherine. Get over yourself. Big deal, big deal, whatever emotions you're going through. Get doing what you're supposed to do. And, and sometimes we have to snap ourselves out of it. Guys, if you've got nobody to encourage you, if you've got nobody to tell you to keep going and you can't wait for me on Sunday, <laughs> you can encourage yourself. You guys read the Old Testament. David did that. David said, you know, it came to this time where there was this battle going on and and all these people were with David and King Saul was trying to kill him. And when they got back to the village, 
all their women and children were kidnapped. <laughs> all their women and children were kidnapped and now all the guys want to turn to David because they're like, it's all his fault. Now all these guys want to kill David. <laughs> He's he'd been running from Saul for like three years because the king wants to kill him. They, they're on these battlefields and they get back. Their village is destroyed. I think, I'm, I could be mistaken, but I think their village was burned down. All their women and children were taken. There's nothing left. And now all his soldiers want to turn on him and kill him because of it. David had to encourage himself in the Lord. That's <laughs> what so the scripture said. I encourage myself in the Lord. So you could have the whole world against you, lost everything. That's not a time to sit in a pit of pity. That is a time to encourage yourself. Let's get out of this. Let's figure this out. If God is with you, who can be against you? Let's not stop here in this awful place. Guys, if you don't take note of anything else, listen, if you're going through hell, don't stop. If you're going through hell, don't quit. Don't lay in bed because you don't want to stay there. If you can't run out of hell, then walk. If you can't walk out of hell, then crawl. If you can't crawl, it's, I don't know, do some fish flops out, <laughs> roll out. I don't know. Do whatever it takes to get yourself out of that place. You cannot stay there and be defeated. You cannot stay there and let the devil win. I know your mind will make things seem real. Your mind will make the emotions, your feelings. How many of you guys are controlled by your emotions and feelings? That was me for most of my life. That was a terrible place to be. You wake up one day and you're not feeling like doing something, so you don't do it. What kind of a life is that to let your emotions? Oh, Angela, thank you so much. You're so kind. Thank you for your generosity. What kind of a life is it to let your emotions decide what you do that day? When can we get to the point where what we care about, what our commitments are, are what drives us? You guys may say, I'm, I'm trying to make, I'm, I'm taking 10% of my income to give to the battered women's shelter. But if you don't feel like going to work that day, they don't get that 10%. So sometimes you have to keep in your mind why you're doing what you do to keep going because it's easy to give up on yourself how many of you know it's easy to give up on yourself i'm raising my hand i know if this was like zoom you guys would be able to raise your hand um it's easy to give up on us but it's not always easy to give up on others how many of you guys some of you guys who are parents know when you're in a funk you can't just lay in bed if you have to feed your kid. If you have to get up and change diapers or you have to get up and feed your child, you, uh, your, how you feel is irrelevant because you have somebody that needs to be taken care of. You guys are saying, true, that's me. That was me before I started my course. I was in bed 24 seven, seriously depressed. See, you, you decided to have a goal. You started this course Steph, you, you were afraid to start that course. You didn't think you could do it. You didn't think you had it in you. But you took that six seconds of courage and hit send on that application, right? And sometimes we all need that six seconds of courage. I want to go up and ask them something. I'm too scared. You know what? You don't have to be brave your whole life. What you have to do is be brave for six seconds and step up to the person and say, hey, I have a question for you. And do it. And you know what? You can go be scared and be a coward after that. But guys, I challenge you this week, this week, do something that for six seconds, six seconds of courage. Yay, Elena. Thank you so much for your generosity. I encourage you this week, tell me what is something you've been scared to do? What is something you've wanted to do, but you've been like nervous, like I don't think I can do it. People say I'm not good enough. People say I can't do it. What is the six seconds of courage you need to just take that first step. You filled up the application, now you push send. You see somebody you want to ask out on a date, you <sighs> take a deep breath, God help me, six seconds of courage. Hey, um, you want to go grab a coffee? Six seconds of courage. Whatever it is, you guys can do it. That's all you need is six seconds of courage. And every time you do that, you're strengthening that muscle. You're getting bigger. You're getting stronger in the spirit realm, in your psyche. You're overcoming. Every time you overcome that fear, you're a little less afraid. You know, the first time you skydive, 
Ooh, woo. But then you do it again and you do it again and you do it. And each time it gets, it gets to the point where you were so scared. Someone had to shove you out of that plane to the point where you're like jump running and jumping out. That's what I want you guys to be with your fear. That's how I want you guys to be with your courage. Okay. I'm going to put rainbow eyeshadow on to wear to class on Friday. You do you. You do what you, you do what makes you happy. Okay. Lucas, I love your optimism, Catherine. Thank you. Skydiving, not going to happen, Catherine. <laughs> but for some of you guys, listen, that may be an extreme example, but it's a visual you could catch in your head. And when you think of how scared you'd be to skydive, why don't you go do that one thing? That you're scared to do why don't you start that company why don't you you're not if you start a company and it doesn't work out you're not gonna die you're just gonna have started a company it didn't work out you're gonna have started a business it didn't work out but it might it might work out it might be your key to success it might be your ticket to freedom it might be everything you want it to be but you're never gonna know until you take six seconds of courage to try it out okay all right, I know probably 30 questions have gone by, but we're, we're doing the best we can here. And guys, I just, I know, I feel like I have to say this a lot because some of you guys aren't necessarily emotionally totally 100% feel good about yourself and you need the affirmations, you need the outward whatever. So if I don't get to your question, it doesn't mean I'm ignoring you. It just, I, I, it's just not possible for me to get to every single question or we would be on here for like seven hours straight. Um, in a, two hours, it would turn into a mukbang and <laughs> be sitting and chatting. So it's nothing personal. I want you to know if I don't get to your question, it's nothing personal. I don't get to 90% of these questions. And it doesn't matter how fast they're going or how slow they're going. It's just I answer one and sometimes it takes longer for me to answer a question and there may be 30 that come in since then okay elena says i'm looking at becoming a youtuber and still present my radio show and still present my radio show so is that are you looking to put your radio show on youtube or do a separate thing from your you uh, do a separate thing from the radio is your youtube show going to be separate from your radio show okay miss uh minerva says lots of people would feel sad and it's okay lots of people are here yep uh, Braylon wants to know if I have grandchildren. No, I do not have grandchildren. My oldest child um, is only 13. So I'm hoping that does not happen for a really long time. <laughs> Give me at least 10 years, please, before I become a grandmother. Because that would just be wrong um, on so many levels. Especially with his cognitive ability. Um, yeah, I, let's, not, let's, not, let's not be a grandma anytime soon. All right, although I do have a friend, I do have a friend that became a grandma at 33 or 34. Uh, you don't even wanna do the math on that. Listen, okay, Steph's going to bed, good night, sleep well. How do you get over loneliness and having no friends? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's interesting. In high school, even, even, when I had friends, I still felt lonely. So you could still feel lonely even if you have friends, if you feel like people don't get you or if they're not, if they're not supportive. Um, first of all, I would, I would work on you. I would work on strengthening who you are. I would work on, you know, figuring out what's important to me. Because if you're just coming from a place of, I have no friends, I'm lonely, you might choose, be, you might, choose friends that are not good for you just to fill that gap, just to help fill that loneliness. So I think first of all, you need to get um, totally like, what do I want in life? What is important to me? What are my assets? Even make a list. What am I looking for in a friend? Make that list. And then once you have that list, you're solid in who you are. You know, you know what you like and don't like. You know what you need in a friend. And guys, not every friend is going to be perfect. I know you, you're, it's not like you're going to have the checklist and go to like a mixer and have your list and be like, okay, my friends must do, do you like um, ACDC? That's a band, guys. 
like from the 80s or 90s. Yes? No, no candy for breakfast. Um, so it's not like they're going to have to be perfect with everything. I, I, you know, making a list is just so you know in your mind uh, what you're what you're looking for, but it's not a checklist to you can't be my friend. Um, <laughs> Elena. Uh, X now wants to see Timmy. Timmy is he's on another he's on another channel today. He's not tuned into this today. Um, so know what you want. Know what you want because do, and, and pray about it. God, this is what I want in a friend. Please send me someone like this. And you're not going to vibe with, with every... Are you growling at me because you can't have candy for breakfast? Yeah. Um, so don't, don't let it be like stuck in the mud. Because you know what? You have different friends for different things. Oh, okay, Sanka, that is, yeah, that's late. Um, you have different friends for different things. How many of you know, um, sometimes, you know, you've got the friend you'll go to concerts with. Then you got that other friend you like to go to the movies with. And then you have a friend that you like to go do karaoke or go dancing with. You got that friend that you go dirt bike racing with. You got another friend that you can just chill and watch TV with. I don't know, we, it's like we have different friends for different things, so not... All your friends have to be, they all fit perfectly. Oh my God, I just found out I passed another assignment. Good job, Steph, for someone who was not knowing she could do it. Look at you, you're just, you're just overcoming every obstacle along the way. Okay, Leah says, in Indian culture, people would say stuff like, be more positive, or at least you're not dying. They value IQ over EQ. Do you have any thoughts on that? For me, and just from what I've learned in life, it's gotta be the opposite. Your emotional quotient <laughs> needs to be higher than your IQ, than your intelligent quotient. How many of you guys have seen, even if you don't haven't seen it in person, on the news or in social media, some very smart person freak out over something? Freak out over like, throw a fit, throw some emotional tantrum over something not being the right. They have all these degrees. They have all this book smarts. They have all this EQ, IQ knowledge, but they don't know how to handle their emotions. Now, if you have someone, uh, I'll use myself as an example. I have worked hard for years to grow my EQ. Now, my IQ might still be at high school level, C average, C minus average. I don't know. I don't even remember. But in situations in life, I I would I would go places, and within a very short amount of time, I would be running things because the bosses cared more about who had a level head, who could deal with customers and their complaints, who could deal with the staff and all their emotional. You're, you're uh, being able to deal with people and their personalities and emotions and, you know, emotional intelligence. That ended up becoming a bigger asset than I got straight A's and I've memorized all these textbooks and all that. That did not translate to real life. Okay, I might have a fancy degree hanging on my wall. So you got a framed piece of paper that you paid $40,000 for. Good for you. But what do you do when you're in an argument? What do you do in real life situations? Do you just say, but I'm an NBA. I have this degree. I know more than you. Well, you think we could have an intelligent conversation and you could maybe hear another point of view that's not your point of view without um, turning red and having the veins in your neck stick out and have your heart palpitate? Is it possible that you could hear another point of view? No? Okay. You may be very smart, but... You don't have emotional intelligence, so it's not going to get you that far in life. All right. What do we have here? Jarell, she uses makeup if you see behind the scenes. Okay. I don't know who you're talking about. Could be me. Could be somebody else. How many kids do you have? Ovia. I have two boys. Um, Timothy is 13 and Elijah is three. Um, 
you don't you don't brag even if you have a degree. Some people do. Some people do. I've met them. It's yuck. They're yuck. Okay, how do you stay positive? Well, it's a choice. It's a choice. Staying positive has nothing to do with what is happening around you. It has nothing to do with, oh, my hair's getting, my hair's like almost dry now. It was wet when we started. Um, these lights, these bright lights. Um, it has nothing to do with what's happening. You have a choice. When something bad happens, yeah, it may be painful. Yeah, it may hurt. But you can be positive knowing, okay, this hurts. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. But I know God is with me. I know I know things are going to be okay. I'm going to be, it's, even if things aren't okay, I know I'm going to be okay. So it's, it's, it's choosing to look at the positive even when you, because we all have a choice in life. You know, someone gives someone a million dollars and they're like, I should have gotten two million and they'll be mad. And there's someone else who gets a million dollars and they're ecstatic and they're excited. You know, um, I may have shared this poem with you guys before. Two men looked out of the prison bars. One saw the mud, one saw the stars. So they're in the same situation. They're in prison, but what are they focusing on? What are they looking at? One is looking at, wow, God is amazing. Look at this universe. Look at these stars. Look at, look at how, how this is just, how is it even possible that I get to, I get to look out my window at this moon every night and it drives them to something bigger. It drives them even in, even in prison, you know, Chuck Colson. I don't know if you ever heard of him, but he was, gosh, was it in the seventies? It might've been in the seventies or eighties. He was involved in politics and he might've even been involved in Watergate. I don't know. Some bad stuff went down. He went to prison. He found God in prison. Some people don't even find God till they're in a bad situation. And so he started Prison Fellowship, which is an organization that I worked through where I, for five years, went to the local jail every Sunday and did a church service for the inmates um, with a team of people. I wasn't by myself. Um, but he that that ministry was born out of out of some white collar, big to do, fancy, someone in politics. Oh, what? A steamboat. Oh my goodness, that is amazing. You are such, I just, your creations are mind blowing. You are going to become something amazing with life. Do you want to show people what you made? Uh, a ski, a ski boat. This is a ski, this is a ski boat in ski boat. Elijah's imagination. This is a ski boat. Isn't it good? <laughs> it's so good. Wow, what a creation. You keep trying. You keep you keep mastering that. I don't know if that would float yet, but you're you're on the right track. Okay. Okay, so the other one is looking down at the mud. Everything's everything's terrible. Everything stinks. Uh this is just dirty. This place is dirty. This is filthy. There's worms. How come, how come I've been stuck in this place and they, they can't even like put grass on the ground. I can't even look at the grass. There's nothing good. You know, it's whatever circumstance you're in, you know, a lot of times I'm not saying like, oh, let's look for bad circumstances. But if you're in them, if you're already in them and you don't know how you're going to get out of the circumstance you're in. Okay. Let's choose. Do we want to feel like yuck constantly? Yeah. Do we want to feel yucky constantly or do we want to do we want to give ourselves some glimmer of hope? Do we want to say, "Okay, I may be stuck in this place for this 10-year sentence. What can I do in that 10 years?" Is it is it going to be complain the whole time or am I going to use this 10 years to give myself an education like I've never had before? I'm going to read every book on this topic. I'm going to do correspondence courses. I'm going to walk out of this place with a degree. I'm going to write letters to my, you know, I didn't have a good relationship with my kids. I'm going to write letters to them every day, letting them know how much I care about them. And you know, whatever it is, we can use whatever terrible situation we're in and 
and look at it from a different perspective of getting time. Getting time, we can educate ourselves, you know, you may complain about your, um, your commute. Maybe you have to take the bus or the train for two hours a day to get to work. Hallelujah, turn it into your mobile university. You get all your audiobooks. You get you listen to audiobooks. You listen to podcasts. You get an education while you're doing it. You, you know, read your read your favorite books. You you do something to strengthen and grow. And you know how we always say, oh, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for all this stuff. I don't have time to do my knitting. I don't have time to do my crocheting. If you've got a two-hour commute on the train, Look at how much you can get done every single day. Those things that you complain about can turn into a blessing. You know, you might have, uh, I know somebody who knits scarves for, and, and hats for like cancer patients. So, you know, if you have that commute, you're using that time wisely. So there's always a different way of looking at things, right? Just like a coin, there's two, there's a head and there's a tail. So you want to play Legos? You want to play Legos. So there's a positive way, there's a positive way to look at everything. And that's, that's, so that's, that's another challenge. Yeah. So guys, it has been an hour. Um, I need to go play Legos. I got to go play Legos. So enjoy your Sunday. Thank you everyone who blessed me with a gift. And I hope... I hope this was wonderful for you guys and you got something out of it. And hopefully, if I didn't answer your question, ask me next week. Bless you.